Well, I got the little Suzuki uh, Jeep um, getting ready to go on to the stands here, all four wheels. I just put it in low, low and just drive it up. Actually, I sprung a bunch of leaks yesterday when I was, <laughs> I drove it about 150 miles, 120 miles or something like that, 120 I think. Um, and nothing was leaking before that except a slight amount in the front pinion seal. But, you know, I don't put it in four wheel drive. Uh, I think it's the rear seals leaking, the, the transfer case is leaking, even though it's a rebuilt um, transfer emissions re leaking in the seals by the drive shaft. I think the reason is because uh, it was sitting a while, and maybe if I move it back and forth, you know, that's like a little bit. But what happens as you use it, there might be a slight amount of rust on the flange, and that causes seal leak. Which you could just other tricks I could talk about. Real quick, but I'm going to show you what it looks like, but I'm also going to show, tell you, like, if you don't want to change these parts, there's stuff you could probably do, with, there's a certain additive you could put in them that might work, but I got the parts on the way, I'm going to be changing uh, both pinion seals, the three seals on the, on the transfer case, and just the one seal on the back of the transmission, because the front seal on the transmission was, you know, is locked up is to the bell housing, and no weather could have got there where you know it could have got rusty by the flange so and i mean it'd be minor surface rust so let's get this up on here we'll see what it looks like underneath there well it's up there it's pretty simple to drive it up on these things man these are rhino uh what the hell these things are rhino something or other ramps rhino ramps so they give you about six inches it also gives me an idea if i did a two inch body lift and a four inch suspension lift Man, that'd be up there. Actually, a two-inch body lift and a two-inch suspension lift. That would really bring it up a lot. I don't know if I'm going to do that, though. Not uh, really. More like into stock, because every time you change something on a Samurai and you move up, it's like you got another weak point, and then you got another weak point. Then you got another weak point, and pretty soon you don't have a Samurai in the first place. The whole idea is it's supposed to be real lightweight and small, and it can go into little tight places. It can't and floats over things. And actually, I just want to mention it here, the easiest way to actually get through a lot of stuff with this, I keep a tire pump in here in a gauge. Just air down your tires about 10, 12 pounds. That's the simplest thing in the world. That usually works, especially with this thing. It floats. It floats over sand and mud and shit. You just air them down, man. It goes. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what's under there. Well, you can see the rear pinion seal is leaking. It wasn't before. <laughs> So we're going to be changing that. Actually, we're going to put in a locker in here anyway. Uh, the back of the transfer case is leaking right here. Uh, the front isn't. Actually, I got all three seals coming now. And da, 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 da. you look at this back of the train. See, it's wet right there. The back of the transmission is leaking too. So. Uh, Anyway, we're going to change out all these seals and uh, check the fluid level and everything uh, and see how low we are. But uh, I know it was full. <laughs> and I've been using this. You can see how much you see the muffler. See how much is spinning off the back of the uh, pinion seal. I know the front pinion seal was leaking a little bit too, but I ain't really been using it in a four wheel drive. So I didn't care about that right away. But uh, we'll be changing the front and rear pinion seal. This this seal, probably not. Uh, just a re I got all three seals for this trans. This is a rebuilt transfer case, so it's not like uh, you know. I'll probably leave this seal alone here for now. See how that one is, and uh, just change the rear seal. But I got all three seals for the. Uh, transfer case you got the transmission the two pinions and the rear seal on a transfer case we'll see if this one's good but this one looks okay but this has been rebuilt by Amco so but back in the 90s with low mileage but it's been sitting a long time so I know the bearings and stuff are good in it you know so anyway we'll be changing that out and we'll see how low and fluid we are but uh, that's that's what happens when you let it something sit a while you go to use it oh yeah I'm gonna tell you some an additive that you can put in there that'll probably work on this crap although I'm not going to use this additive um, but you know if you're in a situation where you're not going to be changing these seals out or you can't 
this additive might work. It's not really sold too many places. I'll show you what it is. Yeah, that's the additive right there. Uh, AT205 Reseal, professional strength, stops seal leaks. And this is not a commercial, but I'm just telling you, um, power steering, rack and pinion, transmission seals, crank main seals. I don't know. <laughs> Freaking name it, man. So, any fluid system, part number AT2, I remember the T205, AT205 by ATP. I don't think, I don't think you can get this, I don't know where this is sold, I think I got this online, but um, I usually don't go into stores and try to find this stuff because usually they don't have it, man. I just know that I reseal the uh, forks on my Hartley without rebuilding them, and I got the, th the oil changer thing on the top where they don't have to... Uh, take out the springs and all that kind of crap that's on another video but this will also work on hydraulic jacks if you got a leak in your hydraulic jack and you try you're trying to find some parts as rare as a dodo egg you just change the fluid in there and you put this crap in here most of the time it works so if you got a jeep and you got this problem like i'm changing the seals but if you got this problem uh, <laughs> try this junk man <laughs> You know, it, a lot of times it's dirt, right? So, change the oil, put this crap in here too, right? Well, I just checked the rear, it's, uh, it's still full. Just the hairs coming out of it, just a slight dribble. It's good, and so it's got a leak, but it's not that bad of a leak. <laughs> Actually, if I was lazy, I could put the, uh, N the AT205 shit in there, and then it'll be good, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... This is actually coming out for a uh, locker. Pumpkin's coming out for a locker in the back. Now, in the transfer case, this is the back of the transfer case. Actually, this is the emergency brake on this puppy. This is, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what the hell this is, an SJ410 transfer case setup. <laughs> but um, no fluid came out of this when I pulled it, took this out, took the, the fill plug out. So. I'm going to squirt some in here, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm curious before I change these parts. I'm curious if I use that, uh, what do you call it, A2, AT205, if that would seal these seals up again. I'm curious. This thing might have lost some fluid, man. Well, it did lose some. <laughs> And we'll see how much this takes. I don't think I did any damage though because it was full when I started. So uh, we'll see how much that takes. But anyway, uh, I'm going to actually run an experiment. I'm going to run this AT205 in the rear and this, the transfer, uh, transfer case, and also the transmission. And uh, see what it does. I'm curious. I'm curious before I go changing out stuff. I will change them out, but I'm just curious if it fixes it. It might. Well, there was definitely no danger of nothing blowing up because uh, you can see it dripping out of there. Really slow. I only put a little dinky can in here. It was like, I don't know, four ounces or some shit. So, uh, you know, even though it looked like a lot of oil, not much really came out. So. No bearings got screwed up. These are all new bearings. So I'm going to try that stuff though. I'm curious if it's going to help it out. So, And uh, I'm feeling the transmission's probably almost full. But better safe than sorry, man. Well, we'll see if uh, anything comes out of the transmission here. I know it leaked. Let's see. <laughs> Well, I don't mean it's dry. I mean, it might be down a hair, but it's down a little bit, so we'll put some in here. Well, that didn't take too much. <laughs> didn't even take four ounces of that can, so... Okay, so, uh, anyway. Wasn't really a major, major problem, so that was like... Uh, mainly, mainly during that 120-mile trip, this thing was leaking, so... Uh, I'm probably just going to, since this is a rebuilt transmission and a rebuilt 
uh, transfer case a while ago with very low mileage on it. Um, the seals are new. They probably just been sitting there a while, and they probably got in one position a while. That's probably why they're leaking a little bit. They're not really probably worn, and they're probably not really dried out. They just probably just cause they've been sitting in one position a while. Uh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that uh, AT205 for the trans and the uh, uh, what do you call it? The diff the uh, transfer case, but in the differential, that's the original seal. So I'm going to change that. And I'm not even sure about changing the front one. So it's got so little. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it out. And see how that shit works. If it, if it totally eliminates the leak, I'm not gonna freaking change the seal. If it totally eliminates the leak, if there's a slight leak, I'll change it. But I'll keep them seals on hand. So this was not as bad a deal as I thought. So we shall see how this works out.